I'm going to call a meeting to order at whatever it is, one minute after five. Um, do we have any amendments to the agenda? I don't. Okay. Well, let's jump right into it. Review Jeff request for proposal, RE, initial building, and et cetera, et cetera. Town hall, goal of presenting, blah, blah, blah. Uh, is this you, Liz? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, so we I sent out on Friday, I think it was. You all should have gotten a copy. It was a PFD of um, the proposal that we'd like to send out this week um, for a study of the town hall. Um, and I just want to acknowledge that Sandy did the vast majority of the work um, working with the um, Preservation Trust Group, looking at some other RFPs for similar projects. So kind of looking at that as our guide for what ours would look like. And then Dave Magida, who had reached out to me um, when I had put out a plea on Front Porch Forum um, a while ago um, in when we were writing the grant to try to get this done. Um, he had offered as someone with um, buildings and grounds expertise from Norwich University for many years. He had offered to uh, help us with this. So uh, we invited him back into the conversation when we knew we had to do this RFP. Um, so he also you know, took a stab at it and did some editing. Um, and so that's what you see is um, a request to be sent out to some architectural firms uh, and have them come back with a uh, with a cost of what it would take to do all the things that are in the RFP. Um, I think uh, Sandy and Dave uh, determined that it would be likely at a minimum twenty thousand dollars, and Dave sort of thought that would be actually very much the minimum and it could be higher than that, that what they'll come back at just because of inflation. Normally, I think it would have been maybe around 20K. I think Sandy, you had maybe heard 15K. Um, so just to give you a ballpark figure, um, I think that's where some of that ARPA money would come from is to help pay for this, to help pay for this, um, this first step. Um, so, I guess that's, Sandy's here to help answer some questions. Um, did everybody get a chance to kind of look at it? Yes, we did. I mean, it looks, it looks fine to me. I mean, you know, you can, you can make those things way longer than that and more complicated than that. And all you do is increase the cost of the bill. I think that's, that strikes a good balance. And I think it'll tell us what we need to know. And if we need more information, we can always ask for it. Yes, Sandy. Yeah, this is intended to be a, a more of a preliminary design type study and not go as deeply into the engineering work that the um, grant proposal was looking to do. Um, and a bit as a first but needed step to see what, you know, and, and you know, more general terms, what would it cost to fix up the building um, if that's the route we wanted to go and give us a baseline to look at, well, if it's gonna cost that to fix up the building, that gives us information to, um, to look at what it would be to move or to build a new building um, as a way to begin to move forward without doing the entire work that the grant proposal was looking to do, which we may still, want to go back and do, but this this would still be helpful um, as as a lead in into that. It wouldn't it wouldn't be duplicative, but it would it would start that process um, if we decide to go forward with that as well. And and again I base this on 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 an RFP that was done for the town of Barnett um, for work that they did when they were looking at rehabbing their town hall and putting the town clerk's office into it. Uh, we already have the town clerk's office in our town hall. Um, so do we have a, uh, a list of folks we're gonna send this out to or do we need to develop that list? 
Well, that's Dave, what I was going to comment on. And Dave gave us only four names um, that he thought uh, were um, that he's, you know, sort of heard good things about. Um, and, and that was my concern that four wasn't necessarily going to be enough. I don't think four is enough. And the Preservation Trust of Vermont folks sent us a very long list of basically everyone in the pretty much everyone in the state. I think we could come up, I think it should go out to about 10 people and figure out folks that are within the, you know, general central Vermont, maybe Burlington area with experience in this. Yeah, I agree. I, I think we need to, I, from what I hear out there and who knows how accurate this is, um, right now, most of the architecture firms are really busy. So, you know, you can bet a bunch of them aren't even gonna respond to this. Or are going to say, you know, I'm sorry, we don't have the time or whatever. So, yeah. So that leads me to the question of, um, so we want to get this out this week, if that's possible, and giving them a month um, to respond, which if we got it out, you know, by, by, I think I said, I might have said the seventh, I have to look at, which might not be possible. Is this something that you would traditionally email to someone? Like, I'm not sure how these go out typically. Do you know, Sarah? Well, you I mean, you know, we could, I haven't done an, I haven't sent out an RFP since the, uh, two, since 2014. So I suppose things have changed, but I would think if the uh, Preservation Trust of Vermont has an email list, that's probably the easiest way to do it. We can just do a BCCC. And I mean, the state sends requests for proposals and grant notices through emails too. I think that's probably the most cost efficient and probably the, mo the best way to do it. If you guys can send me an email list, I can send those out. Did, they, did it come in email, Sandy? I'm pretty sure I have the email contacts for all for all of them. And, you know, if you wanted to send it out to even a bigger group than that, you could. But I, you know, I don't know that we need to send it to 50 people. If it doesn't cost us anything, why not? No, uh, I don't want to send it out to 50 people. <laughs> I, that's, that's a little crazy. We but could, I, I don't know how we pick. I guess, I guess maybe I would have, I would have, uh, have Dave look at that list. He's going to know the cast of characters better than any of us and pick out 10 of them. Yeah, we can get, we can check back in with Dave and, and identify, he, he identified four that we should definitely send it to. And I think we can find others as well. I bet he can. And so is everyone okay with Dave Magida being the contact is the question. Um, in terms of contact, you know, as someone is doing, is, is, is it has questions about this RFP, it needs clarification, maybe has, you know, they're in the middle of doing it. I think it's just for now, it's Dave, for just the RFP piece. He's willing to do it. I think it'd be great. Yeah. This, is what, this is what he did all his working life. He's the expert. Peter? Yes. I'm sorry, Victor. I saw your hand. No, I, you know, you know, I know, I know, I know uh, uh, we talked about this last time um, and we we're going to spend 20, 15, $20,000, but, uh, um, and we keep kicking this can down the road. Um, why don't we uh, decide whether we want to this I mean, we're going to spend a lot of money on a town hall. That's after we get done, we're not going to be able to do anything with it. And we're still going to have basically the same problems. It wouldn't take a rocket science to figure that out. And why we don't decide, like going to Welch Park or even using our, 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 our ground over by the town shed. Uh, I mean, I guess this is somebody said uh, something about the the police barracks, but I think your chances of getting that are very slim. And instead of spending this money on, uh, you know, an, an end that you know, uh, which is even, uh, Sandy said, if we decide to do it or if it's feasible, why don't we spend this money on looking or why don't we spend some of our select board on looking at Welch Park or looking at the town and seeing uh, how to build uh, a place that, you know, possibly uh, 
we definitely could house uh, a town meeting and we could house the town administration and uh, maybe even do something for the uh, road crew as far as uh, a building for the road crew. I, I just, it, somebody's got to tell me why, why we would spend this money on something that I think most of us know in our heart it's just not going to work. You don't have the space for parking. Um, you don't have the area for a town meeting. So, anyways, uh, I hate to play well, the devil's advocate. I would say the answer to that is, Victor, that this is going to give us those. This is going to give us those answers, and I know it's a lot of money, um, but you know, I mean, I can get a, I can get an opinion from somebody pretty quick what it's going to cost us per square foot to. To build a new building somewhere. I mean, that's not rocket science. No, it's going to be it's going to be up there in the in the you know couple at least a couple million. Well, you know, so here's the here's the other question. You know, if we're if we're going to build a new building, are we building a new building of a size where we can hold town meeting in it? That seems kind of crazy to me. I say you have town meeting at the school, and what we do is build a build an office with a select board meeting room in it and and space for our staff and a decent vault. But I mean, those are all those are all questions we've got to get to. I don't think it makes any sense. And certainly our existing town hall, unless we put a big addition on it, doesn't have the space to uh, doesn't have the space to have a town meeting and won't have the space. So I think the town meeting issue for me is, you know, it's probably going to be at the school. But the school's a good idea, and we do have an agreement with them, but, uh, yeah, I would be uh, – th that's not the end all over there. If you really – if you had to meet, you know, if uh, what do we have? Uh, what do we have show up for 500? Susan Clark's sitting right there. She'll tell you. Not even that many. How many? Not, Susan? How many people go to – I mean, you're not – even the school's not going to be a spot for uh, – if if you had a large uh, – large, uh, uh, gathering for uh, our, our large, uh, highly, uh, highly uh, high amount of people, voters in the town showing up for the meeting. Yeah, but we're it not hasn't gonna, happened. I know we're not going to build a space. I mean, I, so Susan, I, aren't I right? It's about two hundred and fifty people usually. At, yeah, uh, I mean, th they set up voting in there as well, so you have to have room for the ballot booths right. and then room for the chairs. But um, somewhere between one hundred and fifty, two hundred fifty depends on the year. But, um, you know, we don't, if, if there were a year, it's always, it's always what's on the warning that's going to determine whether you get a really high turnout or not. And if we know we've got a really hot issue, there's nothing that says we couldn't have that town meeting uh, at U32, you know. And so, I mean, it, it, that we have some, some options if we knew we were going to get, you know, an extraordinary turnout. But I think the capacity in the gym at, um, at Romney might, is, I, I, I don't know, that'd be, that'd be a good question to find out. I don't think in my, and I think I've been at every at every town meeting. I might have missed one along the way somewhere, but there's been capacity to have more people at Rumney. But I agree. I mean, there's there's U32. I don't know how many people if we pulled all the trucks out of the fire hall. I don't know how many people we could get in there for a town meeting. That's a pretty big space. But I don't see. I really do not see uh, this town clerk's office, no matter what. Uh, creating a space to have, uh, I mean, maybe a, maybe a meeting room for a select board meeting and a small hearing, public hearing, but not, not town meeting once a year for three hours, no. But that, that's, fine. That, that's fine, Peter, but you still, uh, this town is not going to stay stagnant. I mean, we're not going to have a town clerk and assistant and, and uh, you know, two listers I mean, it, we're going to, we should, if you're going to build a place, you would, you would build one that for expansion. Right. I thought, I think. No, I don't, I don't disagree, but, but. you know, if you're not, I mean, I, I, you know, I've thought a lot about this Victor, just, just like we all have. No. And, you know, the existing town hall has a lot of wasted space in it, the way it's configured now and it doesn't work at all. Mm -hmm. uh, if the, if the upstairs, was used for additional office space. You could have a lot of a lot of stuff going on up there, and yeah, I don't know the answer. 
I mean, if they come back and say it's going to cost way more to way more to renovate that building than it does to build a new building, I'd say we're looking at building a new building. But I don't think we know that. You don't know. You don't think that. I don't know. I've I've had estimates of what it costs to put an elevator in there. I've seen estimates for what it's going to cost to increase the increase the size of the uh, vault. How about the septic design? Well, if all if all you're using it for office space, you don't need a septic system for 200 people. I don't, Victor. I don't know the answer to any of those questions. No, no, no I'm not trying I mean, to. I'm what, not trying to badger you. This, this is going to determine, and I know it's expensive. But I think we need something rather than rather than fiddle around and fool around. Um, I think we need uh, a professional job of doing this where they can come back to us and come back to the town and say, you know, this is the way we need to go. And I know it's expensive, but we're going to spend half a million dollars or a million dollars or whatever we're going to spend spending twenty thousand dollars to get the information is relatively small potatoes. You can look no, at it in that the old way. Days, in the old days, Gene Jocelyn would have sit down with a piece of graph paper and Dwight McCullough, and they would have drawn the thing up and built it. I know. <laughs> but we're not, in the, we're not in that world anymore. I don't know. How do other people feel? I, I'm, I'm in favor of doing this. I think we need to do it. But Randy, yeah. you're muted. Yeah, Liz had her hand up. Yeah, and Phil, too. Yes. Oh, I was just uh, going to yeah. say... Oh, go ahead, Phil. No, go ahead, Liz. No, I was just going to reiterate sort of what Peter already said is that we, you know, I, I think we have to do our due diligence on a professional level to be able to determine, to, to be able to say to the townspeople, well, it turns out we have to, you know, look at new real estate or we have to tear the building down or it's rehabilitatable, right? And And I don't think our sort of assessments is... Or even Sarah's, you know, saying, oh, well, you know, the plumbing breaks and the this and that happens. Those are all, that's all really good information to have, which we've shared in that RFP. But I think we really do need uh, to have, if, if we're going to present to the townspeople a major expense, we have to have done the, at least at a bare minimum, the legwork of determining that our building has problems and what those problems are. Um, so I'm in favor of, of spending the money um, to do that assessment. Uh, on a gut level, I absolutely agree with Victor um, in that I, in, a, in a way I hate to spend the money because I think I, I do know where we're going to end up. But I, I do have to say with I agree absolutely what what Liz just said that I think we have to do our due diligence. We have to be able to present something to the voters um, for our rationale and going one way or another. And we need good hard facts um, and, and reasonably firm numbers at least for what it would cost uh, for, the, uh, for the various options that could be in front of us. So um, ultimately, yeah, I think we do have to do uh, a study. Randy, you're very quiet tonight, Randy. Yeah, I just, you know, I agree with Victor. Can you, are you muted? muted? Getting some feedback here from somebody. Um, anyway, I agree with Victor to the point where I don't like spending money to, on stuff when we think that we're going to get there, but I do understand the need to be able to, communicate to the town's folks that we've done our due diligence and and we've we're not just putting something on paper here with the five of us sitting around saying oh we think this is what the cost is going to be and and whatnot do i think that it's going to be cut more do i think it's going to be better to uh build a new building and and whatnot probably in the long run it's probably what the town needs i would say let's put this out there let's see what the cost is and my my viewpoint on this may change depending on what the cost comes back at if it's if it's you know way above this twenty thousand dollars i'm probably not going to support it nearly as much as i would as if it's going to come in at 
15 or 20. I don't know, but let's put it out there. Let's see what, see what the proposals come back at. And um, I do think that, and I don't know what kind of requirements are, are attached to any of this, but you're probably going to have to post it publicly. Um, I would think, and not just selectively email folks um, as part of this RFP process. Excellent point. Yeah, we could do that. Probably we should do that. Yeah. I, I, you know, I think it's going to be interesting to see what, what the numbers come back at, you know, the, the sort of the, the fallback. And I've been thinking, Peter, about I, I can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I've been thinking about this ever since I saw the, uh, saw the RFP and, you know, sort of the, I want to be careful how I say this, but the more simple way to do this would be to have a number of folks say, okay, let's, let's, let's make it really simple. What's the difference between rehabbing our town hall and is that going to meet our needs or, or what's the cost of a new building? I mean, if, if you tell them how many square feet you want the new building to be, they can come up with a number pretty darn quick or, a, or an estimate pretty darn quick. Right. Um, is that as comprehensive as this RFP? No, it isn't. Um, but it might cost a lot less money or almost no money. I don't know. But let's see. I mean, all we're, all we're doing now is putting this out to see what it's going to cost to do this. And I agree. If it comes back and it's forty or $50,000, we certainly need to rethink it. If it comes back, if it's ten or $15,000, hallelujah. Um, but we, we've done the work to put it together. Let's get it out there and see what we get, I say. So do we need a motion? We, yeah, I'm assuming we need a motion. Yes. Okay, so I'll, I'll move that we, uh, in fact, um, send out the RFP um, to, well, one, to a list uh, that we're going to determine are pre-qualified, um, but also post it publicly uh, just to, to make sure for transparency reasons that we've covered all the bases that we need to. Thank you. I'll second that, Peter. Okay, thank you, Victor. Um, so it's been moved and seconded to put the proposal out there and also, as Randy suggested, to uh, post publicly, which I think is a good idea, um, with the idea that, um, yeah, that's, that's basically it. Um, so all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So you are all set, Liz, you know what to do? Um, no, uh, I think I'll just need to talk with Sandy about getting the list. So my, I, but I do wanna make the question before I make a final um, copy. Uh, is one month enough time? I think that made sense. So maybe I wanna put the date to be October, I'm sorry, so this Friday or something. By this Friday, we'll have the email out. So that gives Sarah some time and Sandy some time to get the list. And then it'll be, um, it'll be October 9th then instead of the 7th, which is what I have it now. Does that make yeah. sense to everybody? I think that's, I think that's yep. fine. I mean, again, they're not doing all the work. All they're doing is telling us what it's going to cost to do the work. Right. So that's just to get the RFP work. back. Sarah. Right. Liz. Can you can you change it to the Monday after October 9th, whatever that is? Yeah. Because I think that be... might be um, a holiday. So yeah, that's Columbus Day the 10th. I'll do the 11th. Okay, the 11th. Okay, okay. great. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thank you, everybody. We all set on that? Yep. Okay. Um, next item in the agenda is... Joseph Allsworth of Capital Fire Mutual Aid to discuss capital region infrastructure replacement plan action possible. Is he here? Is he in the waiting room? He's yes. here. He is. Here. Hello, good evening. Good evening, sir. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Uh, Chief Devia sent out some uh, documents. Did everybody get those? Yes. Okay. So let me give you a little background. My name is uh, Joseph Allsworth. I'm the Deputy Fire Chief for the City of Barrie. I have uh, over 35 years of experience in the fire service, uh, most of it here in Vermont, 
Um, I'm, I'm currently the uh, first vice president of the Capital Fire Mutual Aid System, which you folks have been a uh, member from the beginning and uh, you're a very good standing. Um, the radio system that I'm talking about is the radios that are on the mountaintop, not on the in the dispatch centers. You currently have a contract with Montpelier Police Department to dispatch your uh, fire and fast squad folks. Uh, that's currently in a four year contract. So I'm not speaking about that today. I'm talking about the antennas and the radios that are uh, located on the mountaintops. Uh, back in 1990, Senator Leahy secured an earmark funding to uh, put all those uh, that equipment on the mountaintops through Mount Irish and throughout the area. The problem with- Sorry, the Joe. Joe, I'm sorry. I'm the. I'm taking the minutes. I'm having a really hard time hearing you. If maybe you could just speak a little bit slower, and or just closer to the microphone. I'm sorry. I'm okay, missing. I'm missing every like every five words. Okay. How, how's this? It's a little bit better. So you're talking about radios on mountaintops. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're not talking about your dispatch. Box. See, that's. I can't hear you either. I'm sorry. How's this again? It's no, almost it's, worse. I think you have to back worse. up a little. How, how's this? Try again. Okay. Can you hear me now? That's better. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Technology at the best. <laughs> so um, back in 1990, Senator Patrick Leahy secured some earmark funding for Capital Fire Mutual Aid to put in the radio system that we have today. So if you do the math, uh, we're about 31 years into this. Uh, we've gone through narrow banding, which has uh, li severely limited our uh, radio uh, capabilities to a point where I know that in the town of Middlesex, they have to tone off multiple towers uh, to tone out one emergency just to get the, uh, the word out. And we have to do that throughout the system. Along with that, we also had it uh, independently uh, evaluated in that it's really come to the end of life and that there's really no parts available uh, through the manufacturers. So they have to go through eBay and uh, stuff like that, to try to find uh, parts to replace the equipment. So we really got uh, our money's worth out of this. It was all free grant uh, earmark. So <clears throat> we, uh, through CVPFA, we uh, employed a, uh, consultant named Televate that did a, a study. So they did a comprehensive study of our infrastructure and they corroborated what Burlington Communication said that it's truly at the end of life and that to, to uh, deliver the services and, and alert our first responders effectively and allow them to communicate on the fire ground, which at some point there are uh, portions of the region that they cannot talk on their portable radios. They either have to go to a truck radio or our car mobile and Chief Mativia can give me a sign if that's accurate, but that becomes a safety issue. So with the end of life of the radios and that being a safety issue, uh, we redesigned and added a couple of towers to balance out the system and create a, a simulcast system. That, that means that every tower goes off at the same time and it increases the uh, efficacy of the radio system. So with that said, we uh, also became partners with the state. So the state's having some issues in themselves where they're shedding 110 uh, EMS, fire and police agents in the, uh, in the area. That's due because they have about an 80% attrition rate for their dispatchers. So they're not gonna be able to have a sustainable model. That's why they're trying to get uh, the radio system under control. So uh, between us and Montpelier, Barry City of Montpelier, with Capitol Fire in the corner, we went and testified at the legislature. We had done a bunch of the right work, and we would absorb a couple of the uh, uh, departments that are being shed, but we'll need this upgrade anyways, and they knew about that. So we designed this radio system to uh, look towards the future. But one thing that the governor and the commissioner of public safety says is listen, 
We, we understand we don't want you to come back and say it's broke again in 10 years. Part of the, the uh, state funding request is that you have to come up with the uh, way to replace it in 10 years. You just should not come back to the legislature with your hands out. So that goes to the uh, spreadsheet that you all have that I sent to you. And basically it's a 10 year savings plan that you will uh, put in to save your, uh, save for your portion of the radio system. So we went through with manager Sheplek from uh, the town of Waterbury. He came up with this and we decided that it would be best uh, situated that we went on the equalized municipal grant list. So basically, if you look at your portion, and Middlesex would be on the hook for approximately $2,900 a year with an actuator. And that's really according to your grand list. And we figured that was the, the fair for the smaller towns also. So over a 10 year period, Middlesex would end up being on the hook for approximately $31,000 for the system. So we just put in for a grant, uh, a state funding request as of Friday at five o'clock for a $3.23 million. So that would upgrade and change out all of the radio towers. If we don't get that, or we weren't able to have that opportunity, we would then have to come back to the 20 member municipality and say, hey, listen, we gotta figure out how we're gonna pay for this. And so right now it was an opportunity to apply for the grant funds. And I spoke with Chief Mativier and we were able to get all 20 communities the tenant of the agree, yes, we support uh, uh, soliciting for the state funding portion. So we were successful. We put it in. We put it, uh, we're able to put in our letter of support, put in our uh, capital plan, and put in uh, what we have done with the Taliban uh, uh, people for the project. We felt that that was the most responsible way to do it and uh, to present a good, uh, complete project that balance for the system. One of the things that we did do is we had public input. One of the things people asked is, on what about our old radios? So the way we, we scope the project is that we said, all right, we're going to do a mixed mode system that allow us to communicate digitally and to our older portables and mobiles and allow people to uh, utilize them as they transition to your radios. Also part of uh, the RFQ we put in for uh, special pricing for uh, a two year period, which is over two budget cycles for uh, to hold them, to have them hold pricing for mobiles, portables, and radio uh, uh, pagers. That's how your firemen are uh, alerted. And they look like this. So we thought that was the most economical way that we really hit through the bang for the buck. So we did that. Um, we should hear from the uh, legislative government office who's making the final decision uh, on or about September 25th. Now I know that's a Sunday, but that's how they meet. And so right now our and then we came out and interviewed. We won't tell you until that day when it gets released. Joe, so I Joe, excuse me, it's Peter. When you when you rock back and forth, you fade right out. So oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you could stay in one position, we'd hear you a lot better. I I, I apologize. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. So um, I know I've talked a lot and I put a lot, but part of what Capital Fire, the City of Barrie, and City of Montpelier want to do is make sure that you're informed, make sure you know it was coming down the pike, and that there was no cloud or mystery. One of the things that we did find out is that. We created the system to be LTE compliant or, or, or be able to meld with that, that cellular technology. Right now, we had some meetings with a lot of the uh, cell carriers. And as you know, cellular service is not reliable. But as it improves and in the governor's plan, we're able to incorporate that technology. We also met with a couple of other folks from uh, public industry. One of them was Consolidated. Consolidated said that they would uh, give us special pricing on fiber optics. 
to each of the mountaintops. Now this is the latest and greatest, but the problem with that is that it was not sustainable. On a yearly basis, we would have a bill of $110,000 in fiber optic connectivity to each of the uh, mountaintops. And that, we, there's no way we could raise that uh, funds off of capital fire dues to sustain that model. And that, so what we did is we went with the next step and that technology is E-line uh, capability, which is all the other dispatch centers are using. It's much more affordable and it's a, it's a negligible increase to get to where we need to go to connect all those. So we also went to- Peter, excuse, me. excuse me, it's Peter again. So we have already given you a letter of support for this yes, project, sir. correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank and, you. And, and we appreciate that. And that's 100% of the capital fire mutual aid rating region to include the town of Warren and the town of Chelsea. So that there will yeah. be new people coming on to stabilize the system. Um, we also, and I, I'll just finish up, we did meet with Velco who offered tower space and access to the generators so that we could uh, uh, have back, emergency backup power. And so that was built into the redundancy and that was very, uh, to a, uh, no, that was a donation from them. So I will uh, I will lend it there. I don't know if Chief McKeever wants to add anything or if I missed something, uh, I'll open it up for questions. Okay, thank you. So so Eric, you're you're up to speed on this. You're supportive of this, correct? I mean, we yeah. talked about yes. this back when we signed the letter. So yep, yep. Um, I think we're I think we're all good. Thank you for your. Uh, oh, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Questions. Wait, I have a I have a basic question. Hi, um, I'm taking the minutes. I just want to be clear. Are the grant, if you get the grant, will the town still be responsible for these these this money or if you or is this only if you don't get the grant? So so this is state funding. This is not a grant money. This is state funding. It's been funded in the budget. So basically what'll happen is is that we'll get that three point is actually put in for three point five million. 3.5 million. If you get the 3.5 million, would the town still need to add those that the, those that money for the for example, will Middlesex still be on the hook for thirty-one thousand dollars after ten years? So so you will be, but it's more like a savings account. You're paying it forward. Uh huh. Um, so if you look at the bottom, manager, manager Sheplick actually looked at how we would invest that money. Okay, you're going out. Um, do you know? Do you know what agency is going to fund this? This three point five million dollar. Uh, it's out of the government legislative ops. Government le gov and you, you are you sure you're going to get it? Or if what happens if you don't get it? So we don't know, and I'll probably end up coming back to say we have a problem. How are we going to fund this system? So in other words, these numbers that you've given us here, those are numbers that if we if you get the three point five million dollars in state funding, otherwise you're going to come back and say we got a bigger problem. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thanks. So is this, um, do you anticipate that, you know, prov provided you get this 3.5 million, that this extra, whatever it is, like around $3,000 um, each year is over the next 10 years will be just added to our bill or is it a separate thing from you guys? Yeah, the way we env en envision it, and we haven't actually approved of this, this is a concept. Of, uh, we would invo invoice you and on behalf of Capital Fire, and that money would be set into a separate account, which will be invested. Manager Sheplek, as you know, is uh, retiring at the, in December. He has agreed that he would uh, manage that account for us um, so to optimize the return. So we'd have our regular bill, and then we'd have this additional $3,000 bill. Yes, ma'am. Okay, gotcha. Thanks. Any other questions, anyone? Okay, thank you very much, Chief. Okay, thank you, sir. We appreciate the information. And Eric, you're gonna watch this like a hawk, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I think, uh, Peter, before we move on, uh, this is speaking on behalf of the Budget Committee. I, I believe this is an item that would fall right in our capital improvement plan. Correct. <laughs> I would say so, yes. I mean, there are a lot of, you know, <laughs> yeah. we don't know if this is even gonna happen yet, but uh, sounds like it's something that needs to happen, but like everything else, 
what was different ways to skin the cat? We took advantage of, excuse me, we took advantage of the opportunity. That's why we moved it so quickly, but it was such a narrow window. We only had three and a half to put it all together. No, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Peter, Peter you passed over the discussion of polling place accessibility um, survey. Yeah. Sorry. First item. My, 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 my eyes are dilated. I was at the eye doctor this afternoon, so I'm, I'm struggling here with my, with my technology. I apologize. That's an excuse, huh? Well, it's the best I've got. I haven't been drinking all afternoon. That's oh, okay. Well, I'd rather that. But... <laughs> so we need to we need to back up and have a discussion of polling place accessibility survey by the disability rights of Vermont last month. No action. No action expected. I thought Sarah had already told us about this, but do we have some? I, I just, report? I just want to put it in. The, I just want to put in the minutes that you received it. I mean, that's part of this whole thing. You received it. You acknowledge it. You know, you can move on. That's why I put it in with the town hall stuff. So yeah, that's all you have to do. Fine. That's fine. Nothing we didn't know. Right. Okay. Thank you, Phil. Okay. So next, highway report update on center road paving action possible, Victor. Eric got a hold of uh, E.J. Blondin of uh, the paving company. And they're either going to be here to Coal Plain on the 12th or the 19th, hopefully. And um, the Coal Plain is going to take a couple of days. Uh, Eric's uh, going up. I think he did today. I don't know. Make a spot for the uh, grindings that come off the Coal Planer so we can stockpile them. And uh, they said it'd take a couple of days. And then uh, right after that, they uh, promised to, or they didn't promise. They said they would, were going to pave uh, right away. They wanted to pave it as soon as they coal planed it. Correct. Hold on. Wait a minute. Vic, yeah. EJ Wanden, is that with Hutchins? Correct. Yes. I'm sorry. I couldn't think of it for a second. <laughs> I thought I camouflaged that real well, but I guess I didn't. <laughs> While we're at it, I'd like to thank Eric and the crew for getting some uh, material in those the sinkholes that we run through. Yeah, yeah. Well, Unfortunately, a lot of it came out. They do it the better. Those those things are a problem, and I I know you guys have been been filling them in, but as as you said, Eric, doesn't last very long with people yep. flying over that. And no, it doesn't. what I find hard to believe is you'd think after they've been over three or four times, they'd know where the places are and slow down, but they don't seem to. No, I I lost track of how many cars sped down the road today while I was filling them. Yeah. Oh. I mean, does it? Uh, I guess it doesn't. We're we're about to be we're a bit, about to be be into it big time. But I almost wonder if it makes sense to put up a sign saying "caution, danger." I saw you put some cones up. I had I had a bump sign and some mm -hmm. cones, and most of the cones disappeared. And I noticed the bump sign is gone. Someone Which was, was it apparently wanted it. Barricade? <laughs> yeah, it was attached to a barricade. Well, let's put it this way: the sooner it the sooner it happens, the better. Now, are yeah, they going to are they going to have to close the road when they call plane or no? No, no, they'll have traffic control. They'll go up one side and then up the other yep. side. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. They'll have the same quality uh, traffic control they had down on Route Two. Yeah. <laughs> so I do. Have, I I you know. <laughs> It just it just struck me as odd. Did did we know that Route Two was getting repaved this year? Because I had not heard that anywhere. And yeah. all of a sudden, yeah. you know, we've got all these all these yeah. discussions about traffic calming and the next time the road gets redone, and all of a sudden the road's getting redone and nothing else has happened. So we knew they were gonna do that? Yes. Okay. Uh, the humor or you know, the part about that uh, traffic control thing is uh, I think I've got, I think I got like uh, 10 or a dozen calls griping about getting stopped down by the interstate and down on route two that people couldn't get on interstate, couldn't get on the interstate and they were missing doctor's appointment and couldn't get their kids to daycare and blah, blah, blah. I'm saying, we don't have anything to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the good news, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
But well, it's frustrating. I mean, I you know, I I understand people are frustrated, but that's the cost of that's the cost of fixing up the roads. Well, I talked to the resident engineer, and he said the company that's providing the flagging service is uh, new to the new to this area or and uh, new new help, and they were struggling. Yeah, Randy, you had a question. Yeah, I have a question for Eric and Victor. Um, I've heard some some discussion and some comments around um, the difference between the cold planning and the reclaiming and concerns that um, basically the traveled path within some of this, so the W that the, it creates within the larger vehicles doesn't get nearly addressed nearly the same with the cold planning versus the reclaiming process because of the way that the roads repacked with the reclaiming and I'm just looking for you guys with the experience to educate me a little bit on, you know, is this, is the savings worth the offset in um, the different methodologies that we're looking at here? And, and is there concern on your end from, um, you know, with, with the potential for the road not to, you know, hold up as long? All right. Nobody jump at once. So, I don't have uh, a big concern of that. The, the road is already compacted, the base. I mean, you're not gonna get it any more compacted than it is. So, so once it's leveled out and repaved, I don't think you're gonna notice those, those wheel ruts, you know, certainly for any time at all. I, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Vic, on that. Uh, it's like the interstate. You know the interstate. Of course, the interstate gets a lot more travel than we do. We we repave that what every five, six, seven years uh, between yeah. here and Waterbury, and um, you know once once uh, of course that road is uh, let's see 1965. Uh, so that's uh, uh, 35, 55, 60 years old, um, and, and and those trucks and everything have been done in those same ruts. I mean they're like sheep. They go in the same ruts. People go in the same ruts uh, all the time. Uh, they will come back in uh, in, a, in a few years. Um, the big issue with uh, reclaim it doesn't really work be, uh, once you stir it up because your problem is they're only reclaiming down about 12, 13 inches, and the real problem is not not down 12, 13 inches. It's down beneath that if there is any. Um, the idea of uh, you you yes, uh, I don't think I don't think. Uh, some of the people, I don't know if you've been talking to Jason Merrill or what, but it doesn't matter. But uh, um, I don't think people understand that they're going to coal plane, yes, uh, but it's going to be like Route 2. They're going to go down and they're going to lay, uh, uh, they're going to level up the material so you have a, have a good plane either side of center line and, and, um, and a, a, of course, compact that. And then they're going to come back and put the uh, inch and a half pavement on top of that. And uh, you know, when you talk about compaction, that stuff has to be that stuff compacts to ninety five percent. So um, that's pretty high. Uh, that, that's the standard for uh, for the state. Uh, actually, if you pound it too much, uh, you you break it down. So the ideal is uh, ninety three to ninety five percent compaction. So uh, will it ever never come back? Yeah, it'll come back at some point. I don't think it's going to come back next year. So. But is it, but they, when it comes back, isn't isn't a lot of it that the that the surface is wearing down just from repeated? It isn't. It isn't that it's compacting, is it? I mean, once. Well, it, you know, there is some there is some deterioration. I mean, yeah, it's, you wear it off your tires. Uh, your tires and your snow plows uh, wear that off. Uh, they heat it up and wear it off, but but it 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 it, it compacts in the same area because uh, that's the weakest point where, where everybody's been driving for sixty years. Right. No. Uh, come to think about it, that road's probably been there since sixty years too, because I think they put that in when they went from Montpelier to uh, uh, Middlesex, and then it it there wasn't any interstate beyond Middlesex for a few years. I know in 1958 there wasn't, mm -hmm. and uh, so I think they did the, this road up through here in like 55. Yeah, Sarah, you had a question. 
Uh, what are you guys talking about? You're saying, are you talking about, could you just be clear? Are you talking about the side of is something creating ruts? Could just someone talk, give me a normal sentence what you're talking about? So I think what we're, I think what we're talking about is the problem that we've all seen on the interstate and we certainly saw it on the, on the center road is that over time you get what, what Eric described as a, as a W, but you get ruts where the, where the heavy trucks go and those ruts fill up with water and ice and they make the road hazardous and hazardous and dangerous. And the concern that Randy expressed that he's heard is people think that the uh, cold planing versus uh, the reclaiming is going to make that is going to make that worse. And I'm not qualified to say whether it is or it isn't. But thank Victor, you. What Victor said made sense to me in that in that you know by reclaiming you're creating a lot more stuff that needs to be compacted than you are when you're cold planing. Okay, thank you. That that makes sense. I didn't know what the W was. Yeah. That's a that's a pretty good summary. And my and my question really comes from a lack of knowledge as to whether or not um, one of the savings of of cold planing is worth the longevity of and <clears throat> what that is. It sounds like Victor feels like it's negligible between what would occur during a cold planing effort versus a, a reclaiming effort. So um, thanks for the explanation. Well, I know just one other quick thing, Peter, the non-highway engineer, is I went to a meeting years ago when this uh, cold planing process was being introduced and they were creating those, those machines. And the strong sentiment then was that cold planing was much better than reclaiming. And, you know, it seems to be, it seems to be used everywhere it can be used. So I think it works. The other thing, the other thing we have going here is uh, we had to do, make some winter sand and uh, we were tentatively going to do it on the 12th. And I'm not so sure it depends on what they're doing because we can't be in the pit and uh, hauling coal planing up at the same time they're hauling out sand. The notch road's a little bit no narrow for that. Yeah. Be so, too much traffic was felt. It was felt that there'd be too much. Work. Yeah. Yeah. The Victor, so I, I'm going to call uh, EJ tomorrow. He says that Wednesdays is when they do their uh, group meeting. Yeah. So I was going to call him tomorrow to see exactly when they're looking at. Right. Okay. Maybe we can have a better idea. We all set. Anything else? The trucks are running, I take it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Good news. Thank you. You're all set, Victor? Um, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, believe it or not, we're, <laughs> we're almost on time, if anything, a little early. Um, we have a letter. You all received a copy of it um, and some correspondence back and forth. Uh, considering Mike Hill's request uh, that to begin the statutory process under 19 VSA 708 to upgrade the Class 4 portion of South Bear Swamp to Class 3. Uh, action possible and uh, Mike is here. Welcome, Mike. Thank you. Uh, we're glad to have you with us. Um, nice to be here. And uh, I believe everybody everybody got that letter and and saw it and and understood it. So um, and I know Sarah has explained to you um, the process the process that we have to go through to consider uh, consider doing this, but. Uh, Give us, give us, give us an overview. You don't. We read the letter, so so we get we get what you're asking for. But uh, give us an overview. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it, Peter and everybody else for considering this. So yeah, Sarah sent me a reference to Section 708. Um, I, I'm not sure that explained the process to me. It probably just I'm too dense to get it, but I didn't understand. I, what I understood is either 5% of the town, which we're not talking about, or somebody who abuts a road, which we are talking about, can raise it, or the select board can raise this stuff anytime on their own, which I've asked the board to do since 2019. And But it's gotten worse over time. And um, I mean, this year we had ruts in the summertime, a foot deep, a foot wide. You, you, there are cyclists going through here all the time. Could you just, could you just back up, Mike, and just yeah. so everybody understands this section sure. of what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. 
So at the end of South Bear Swamp Road, the northernmost section that runs into East Bear Swamp Road and ultimately to North Bear Swamp Road is about 0.7 miles, <clears throat> um, maybe a little more than that. And I'm all, there are five families that are in the southernmost third of that, maybe 300 yards. And I was one of those families eight years ago. It was my ninth summer here. Um, and after a while, you know, we were having delivery trucks who couldn't come here, or frankly, tow trucks who couldn't tow, sometimes, you know, some drivers out. And I just asked, well, can we get, can we consider maybe just getting it plowed down to just past my driveway, which is the first 150 yards, so people could make that hill? So I could, but that would help all four families, the other four families down the hill. And um, I guess I didn't understand the procedure well enough then. Um, and I'd hoped it would be taken up, but it wasn't. So this year, it was really dangerous, not just in the winter, when a family moved in last August, three young kids, three, now four, six, and eight, now nine, they couldn't get fuel. And we're all taxpayers here. And it can't be that you have five families and 300 yards of road, and there's some reason, and it's not in 708, as to why... The, the, the town's resources are being spent for one family on East Bear Swamp Board to extend the plowing of well over half a mile for one family. I want to emphasize, I'm not against that. I like that family. I know that family. I know all the families, in, or most of them, in, in the Bear Swamps, and I like them all. I just don't want to see the. I want to understand why the five of us can't have well, a road that's safe in the summer. I have a bicycle, a motorcycle. No, I, you know, if I ride those on the road, it's about four miles an hour. And I see people even driving their cars, gripping the wheel. Again, just to just to back up, and, and yeah. I'm maybe it's just me, but I'm a little confused about exactly which stretch of road you're talking about. Which worth the okay? So when you drive up South Bear Swamp, you get to the very top of the hill where Rita Rickardson and Dave Feldman live. And there's yep. about eight black mailboxes on the left. Yep. Right there, there's a sign Randy, that says- Randy? Yeah. yeah. So Mike, um, I happen to be somebody who doesn't necessarily know the residents within Middlesex. Uh, I am looking at a map as you're talking. Um, so when you mm -hmm. refer to folks' uh, mailboxes and driveways, sure. it doesn't necessarily click for me. I'm um, sorry, yeah. When you're when you're talking about driving up South Bear Swamp, I'm looking at a map and I see Daniel's Farm Road off to the left hand side. Yes, is that the side of South Bear Swamp that you're referring to? It's it's that is well, South Bear Swamp. You know, you're coming up from Center Road now, and Daniel's Farm is on your left. What I'm talking about is another quarter to a half mile past that. The begins a quarter to a half mile past that. So you'll see. There's the last 0.7 of South Bear Swamp Road. You keep going up, and you'll see how South Bear Swamp ends by merging into East Bear Swamp Road? Yes. I'm only talking about the last 0.7, or maybe 0.8 or 0.9. That's all I'm talking about. And really importantly, I'm only talking about the first third or maybe quarter of that last 0.8 or 0.9. I'm talking so about- just past the Bridensteins? And there's another house on the right. Is that um, what you're talking about? No, he's not. Okay, I'm really confused then. So just to do you, you do you guys know where um you guys know where Minash put all the property from the Christian farm, right? Yes. Okay. No, I don't I thought I did, but hmm. I now I don't think I do. Uh we do you know where John Christian lives? No. Okay. Do you know where uh David Lawrence lives? You know, you know who I know it, where he lives is Paul Zabritsky. And if I keep going up that road, there's yeah. the white farmhouse. And then that's where the road ends. Kind of. That's where, the class, that's where class, class three ends. Correct. Right. Yeah. That's where the class three ends. And then you go down the road. And that's, I think your house might might be on the right, but I'm not sure. Somebody yes. is in the way back there. Yes. Then that's there's so that log cabin. And then there's Joanne Bridenstine's and another yes. family. You got it. Okay. So let me tell you this. So, yeah, I'm... For, for five years, I've been the first house on the right. I have about yep. 50 acres. Yep. And then the log cabin is my neighbor, Bill and Diane Chapin. Um, and then Bill sold me most of the rest of the road on the right last August. Because um, so, But he kept his 14 acres, his house and his ponds. He and I have become very good friends. And so I bought from him, it kind of wraps around... 
there's 10 acres just beyond Bill, and the Lund family bought that last August um, from Bill's daughter, Heather. And the Lund family are a young, wonderful couple, farmers from Michigan, and they're with me farming some of my land now, and they have three young kids, and they're the ones who couldn't get fuel this winter. So where across did they, the where road- Where do they live, Mike? Where, where do they where, live? Where do they, they live, live, okay. Do you it's have hard, an address? You can't, you can't see their, their address is 406. 406, okay, thank you. And that's and, um, oh, okay. and the Chapins on the right-hand side are 376. Okay. Now, just across the driveway from the Lunds is a single driveway that serves two families with 50 and 20 acres, respectively. So one is the Bridensteins and Mike Klein, right? Joanne Bridenstein and Mike Klein. You can see their house readily, but if you go halfway up their driveway, there's another driveway off to the left. Oh, I didn't know that. So Dan Riley has a house up there with 50 acres. So, um, Mike, just just to give you a little a little uh, background, and I appreciate very much your uh, coming before us tonight. Mm. Um, but over the years, we get requests to upgrade roads, and I think in my time we've gotten maybe eight or ten of those requests. Some some longer, some shorter. And uh, historically, we've been, I will use the word, reluctant to upgrade roads, mostly because of the cost. And in some cases, you know, neighbors have banded together and we've given them permission to improve the road or repair the road. Um, I have no idea what the cost of uh, what the cost of upgrading that road would be, but it would be pretty substantial, I'm afraid. Um, which means it's a problem. I mean, and the other part of it is, and don't get me wrong, but all of you who chose to live on the class four road knew it was a class four road when you, when you built your houses there or when you moved there. So I'm not saying I'm not sympathetic and the board isn't sympathetic, um, but I guess what we need to decide if, is if as a board, um, we will go ahead and consider consider this request, investigate it, see what the cost is, and see if there's any way we would consider doing it, or if we okay. just can or, can or don't want to do it. Um, and I understand I understand it's frustrating when, when people can't get fuel, and it's frustrating when uh, plow trucks can't get through and all of that, but, uh, you know, again, and I don't mean to sound, sound mean or nasty, but you knew what you were getting when you when you built your house there or bought the house there or moved there. So, um, how do other how do other board members feel about this, Victor? Well, well, Mike, would you be considered the petitioner? Well, I am at this point. I've not asked anybody else to pull in. I, I want to be clear. I have tried to work with this town to give it you know other things, and I have felt vilified, frankly. And, I, you know, I'm not going to pull people into this with me. Um, so right now you can consider me the petitioner. I will tell you there's nobody opposed to it. Nobody would be opposed to it. No, what I ask is and I could, if I could respond to some things Peter said, I'd like to, but, but go ahead, Vic. Yeah. Okay. You can in a minute. Um, yeah, it's, it just, uh, the, the question I always have is, uh, Section 711, and if you're the petitioner, the uh, uh, you know, you, you're you may be you may be the one that uh, would pay for the uh, upgrade. Are you willing to do that? Well, I'd like to know what the costs are, I'd be helpful, Vic. But with all respect, Peter, when I bought my property, no, I didn't know it was class four, and I didn't know the difference between class four and class three. So, you know, that's on me, perhaps, but it, it was never told to me. Now, I might have been, you know, stupid, but that's what I bought. And um, I didn't mind for a while, but yeah, you might get eight or 10 requests, and you got to consider that. But this is a democracy. And when requests come up, I think we're all in the town allowed to be treated equally and regardless of how long we've been living here and like we're, I, we're I think absolutely we're we're absolutely going to going to treat you equally i can assure you of that we're not we're not going to uh 
we're not going to discriminate against you in any way, but it's, it's a bigger question than your section of road. I mean, once, once you know, and, and, you know, we, we struggle to maintain, we struggle to maintain the roads we have. That's all, that's all I'm saying. You know that if you've been at town meeting and, you know, we have, we have mud season problems all, all over the town on our class three roads. So all I'm, all I'm saying is it's a, it's a financial, it's a financial issue. Well, I, I appreciate uh, everything's uh, a financial. I appreciate that everything's a financial issue, Peter. Right. But if you can, if you can plow, well, first of all, I'm not insisting upon this being class, class three fully. Uh, I had understood from one of my neighbors that there was something happened in McCullough Hill Road. I mean, he may have been misinformed, but it, if he's not, this is all I would seek is some plowing and some grading. It doesn't have to be widened. You told me years ago there was an issue of turnaround. I said, no, they could turn around on my property. They can turn around at the end of the road, same as they do at the end of East Bear Swamp Road. So I don't accept that. I don't accept that I've not been retaliated against for standing up to Minash on the law. Mitch Osecki, I have said to him after I bought the 160 acres and put over 200 in current use, Vic, or Mitch, I understand you're head of the trails committee. Look, if you ever want to talk about townspeople using trails on my property, love to talk to you. Didn't hear from him. Wrote him. Didn't hear from him. Now, you might say that that's coincidence, but I don't think so. Um, and uh, there's other things, and I, I shouldn't have to go into these. I just want a transparent process where people who live on my section of the road are treated as well as people who live on other roads per dollar of maintaining. I'm happy to do some stuff, but if you're going to retaliate against me, I mean, Peter, you and I met think, in 2014. Look, look, if I, could, I don't want to get into it with you. I'm, I am not intending to retaliate. I can, I can understand why you Mike, don't want to. But if you're, gonna, if you're going to be denied, we're going Mike, to get into it. Mike, my turn to talk for just a minute. Okay, okay. yeah, sure. And then Liz had her hand up. In no way, <laughs> in no way or am I or any member of the select board retaliating against you. You're making a request. We are going to consider your request. All I was trying to do was give you a little background of the town's history with regard to upgrading class four roads. And if you thought that was retaliating against you, I'm sorry, it was certainly not my intent. And I apologize if it came across that way to you. Not that comment. Okay, so I apologize for that, Liz. Um, yeah, I was just gonna comment um, about just the overall like, you know, precedent setting of upgrading roads that are class um, four to, to class three. Um, first, I, first, I just have a question for Vic. Does that road, does that portion of the road ever get graded like once a year? I'm glad you asked that question. Thank you. Um, because we have to, we have, uh, we do. Uh, Mr. Okay. Lund called me the other day, and uh, they keep telling me that uh, in the past that they have graded that road. I know Eric went up and graded it. Um, I know that uh, a person named Crystal called about uh, North Bear Swamp from East Bear up around the corner to the gate. She wanted that graded. And... Uh, Bill Reinecke, I think, has his graded twice this year. I don't know that it ever, I, I don't know. I, I've talked to Eric about this, and it's got to keep it within reason. But, mm -hmm. but there are certain roads that are class four, like Upper Barnett, that we never grade. And there's houses, there's kids, uh, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So, uh, oh, that are class four. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. But class yeah. four. Or so, I'm talking about cl all class fours. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So then, let's just let's just back up a minute and uh and, can I finish and, my question or my comment? So I, I just wanted to say that um that to to Mike's comment of plowing versus you know grading occasionally, my understanding from all the previous conversations we've had about this kind of thing is that we do occasionally grade class four roads, you know, when it fits when the grader fits there's somewhere they don't right so they never get graded 
Um, but we never plow them. Like that's definitely not something that we do. Um, but what I wanted to say, just to kind of wrap, wrap up Peter's comment is that I think there's a precedent that would be set that possibly would be set that other people. So for example, I live on a private road that has five families on it. And I believe I could petition because it's five or more families. I could say, I would like this to become a class three road, right? Because I would like it to be plowed because I live here, even though I moved there knowing that I have, that we have a driveway agreement and we have somebody that we hire to do our plowing and grading that sort of legally I could go to the town and we could have a petition that says, well, we would like our road to become class three as well, because there's X number of families that live on it that are served, um, that, that are townspeople. So I would, you know, so be somewhat concerned that we could see more of these types of requests as more people move in and as driveways get longer and bigger, like Leland Farm Road, for example. Like those are examples where, you know, you could see the town getting asked to plow all those houses as well. So that would be my concern. So could I just, could I just back up for one minute and I see your hand, Randy? I guess I'm a little confused, Mike. I, I thought I thought initially when I read your letter that you were asking us to upgrade the road to Class Three Road. It sounds to me like that is not the case. No, I, well, <laughs> my point here is I'd like to have it plowed or graded. And if the only way to do that is three, then absolutely, I want to be treated as well as the single family at the end of East Bear Swamp Road or some rational reason why I'm not, why my five people are not. And uh, Liz, thank you very much, because nobody in, in four years has told me what you just told me, which is that five people can get together and petition. I don't know how you know that, because yeah, I went to law school. I don't know that. No, I've come I, I didn't to the say town that, Mike. for four years it. and asked this question, and I've I seen 708. Well, then what? No, I said I've five heard... families on a road can, can, if there's five families physically living on a road. We that, have five families could physically living on a road. A pro, that, that could constitute the request for a Okay. Well, a why does that not apply to me? I, I think it does. But I'm just saying there's a lot of people it applies to, is my point. Oh, like There's so a lot of people in Middlesex who have live on private roads with five or more people. Five or more families. Live on class four roads, Randy. And, and you live on class four, right. So um, I'm confused. Are you, are you saying that if the five of us in this pod ask for this to be um, either plowed or graded or even class three, there's a mechanism for us to do that? It doesn't feel like it's any different than you coming forward as an applicant now, right. a single person. Uh, I, thank you, Randy. I appreciate that. I just think there might be a body of law someplace that I haven't seen. So and I'd like to know about it. So my my comment um for the board and for Mike and and if I'm if I'm wrong here, I'd like somebody to clarify. But in in the documents that are on the town's website, and I think Victor uh mentioned this earlier, that while you can petition to classify, to reclassify the road. Uh, it does state in the ordinance right now that um, the petitioner, in that case, you or the applicant, right, um, or the five people, if they're all applicants, um, would be responsible for cost that would be incurred to upgrade that road. Um, hence your question before, what is that? I mean, I don't know, um, but I, I just sounds like there's some confusion as to whether or not you can come, but I just wanted to repoint that out that 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 I'm, reclassification I'm, doesn't I'm, that the town yeah. is paying for the the upgrades needed to move from a class four to a class three. Well, um, if there's a cost, I'd be I might be willing to do it. I mean, right now we're spending over five thousand dollars a year to have someone plow it, and I'm not looking for driveways, so. Don't be concerned about long driveways because we will take care of our own driveways. My driveway is long, but it's flat. It'd be easy. What we have is a road 
that trucks can't go down. So five families are really cut off. And I guess I'll pay if it makes sense to pay, but why should us five pay when somebody else gets a half mile to their door and they don't pay a nickel? I just, I'm just looking for parity and transparency and reason. And if there are rules out there like this or that, I mean, I can't even find a map that tells me is, has a road been thrown up? Is it a trail? Um, it was suggested you know, posted on the wall. It's, it's, the a, it's a mystery Mike. to me. Mike, to post it on the wall in the town hall. You can look at it any day the town clerk's office is open. Okay, I will do that. But I don't know why it's not on the website in a way that well, can, it is uh, actually it's on the AOT website, Mike. If you go to Vermont a Agency of Transportation, you can go pull down any map of any town going historically, including currently to see AOT maps. We have them. We have it on the wall or it's at AOT. OK, well, that's helpful. I, I'll look for that. I'll find out whether or not, for example, the uh, what what is listed on Google as a road, um, the road behind the Feldman's is road or was it thrown up? The road that crosses my property, Bushy, I'm glad to have it be a public road and for Bass to be across it. But is it a road? Is it a trail? Is it what? What? Where do you learn these things? It, it's a mystery to me. That's where you come on down to the office. We'll have a long discussion. I okay. just want to, I just, just for the point of clarification, um, it's the number. I don't know why everyone's getting uh, hepped up on the number five. It's just that the, I just want to make sure that people are not confused with 5% of the voters on petitions. It's not the number of families. And I don't think that was Liz's point, but I'm just saying that you need who are voters, landowners, and whose number is at least 5% of the voters. So that's the number that you need to petition. If the board doesn't accept your request, Mike, you need 5% of the voters in a petition. That's yeah. and, and I'll do that if I need to, but it doesn't seem like I want to trouble 5% of people who I'm just getting to know. But to Liz's point, exactly what she said was said to one of my neighbors by, by a fuel delivery driver. So, it, but again, this is not... A mystery. It's written down somewhere. I'm just going to ask you to tell me where a layperson. Mike, have you have you read it. our have you read our highway policy? No. Well, I would suggest you read you read it because that's what spells out this process. Well, I did ask for out. I asked for the process, Peter, four years ago, and I asked for it a month ago or August 18th, and no uh, one has said the words highway policy. I, time believing if you formally asked for a copy of our road policy that Sarah wouldn't send it out to you in a hot Peter, second. I didn't know to ask for it. I asked what are the well, procedures and I was told 708. Look, 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 look. Let's 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 settle down here. Let's do a couple of things. Okay. I would suggest that you should review the highway map, that you should review our town highway policy, and then come back to us with exactly what you want to have happen. And I would encourage you as far as I know one person can do it, two person can do it, 10 people can do it. I would tell you it will have more strength if your neighbors all get together and come to us as a group with a proposal of what you want to do in conformance with our road policy. And, you know, we will absolutely, absolutely consider that. We've, we've done it for, we've done it for many other people. We haven't done it at the town's expense for many other people. Okay, I'll follow that, should the, that should be the process. I mean, you you say you're a, a trained legal person. You should be able to you should be able to find out this information. It's easy. You're, you're right. I as, I'm to give you a, hard as time. a high school graduate, I should be able to find this information. It doesn't well, matter. Where I mean, you could. I don't want to argue with you about that. It's readily available, Randy. I put it in the chat. Um, there's a there's a link in the chat now to the uh, ordinance page from the town's website. I just want to I just want to be clear that 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 ordinance was passed way be like years and years ago. And I just want you to know that the state statutes trump everything on that. So you've barely got a and the reason we know so much about this frickin Title 19 is because the town just recently discontinued or downgraded five roads. And then that last year discontinued to a or downgraded to a legal trail a certain part of um, Dolan Road. So the board's been through this recently and they, they're they pretty familiar with Title 19. That's that's statutorily what you gotta follow. Okay, well, I'll do my best. I'm having trouble. Oh no, I think I did do it. Randy, thank you for sending that link. I'll, I'll look at that. And Sarah, I'll come down and 
learn what I can from you and um, take it from there. Yeah. So thank you for your time, everybody. I didn't mean to take up this much time. Okay. Well, thank you. I, uh, I don't mean for you to think that we're, we're against you on this. We're not. We're just trying to explain the, the bigger picture is all I'm telling you. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Okay. All right. So you will, you will get back to us. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah I'm happy to. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we need to go into uh, executive session to discuss appointment or employment of an employee. Is there a motion to go into executive session? I move that we go into an executive session to uh, speak about a, a potential employee. Okay, thank you, Victor. Is there a second? Uh, who is, who's going to be included in that motion, Victor? Oh, yeah, forgot that. And we'll get it eventually. I would say Eric and all the select board, and I guess Dorinda, if, if, if she's the one that's going to run the, run the uh, be the host, I, I don't know. Does that sound reasonable? I'll second. Okay, thank you. Um, all in favor, please say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Okay, we're in executive session, so you'll give Dorinda the power, Sarah? Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm, I might slide away here just shy of seven because we, uh, we have company and uh, we're going to have dinner, so if you see me uh, go dark, that's where I've gone. Okay, well, I'll all I would say is, so we have down here uh, in our other business, considering whether we're going to go back to in-person meetings or not and when. Um, do you have any I'm thoughts? With whatever no, any, no. everybody else decides. Okay. All right. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Okay, Dorinda, Treasurer's Report. Um, I don't think I have a lot of financial stuff. Um, I did send you guys that RB technology stuff um, where they're billing us for all of the, uh, you know, to tell us several times over again how bad our server is. And we also received uh, a new contract that they want signed. Um, I did go back and check. In April, we were paying $705.86. In May, they went to $735.86. And now for September, they want to bill us $798.71, which I think Randy did the math earlier. And 13% increase in the last four months or five months. Yeah. And I, I just think there's a lot, of, and it, it reading through this contract, it almost looks like they're going to be billing us differently, um, how they, um, not just the rate, but what, how they're going to consider different things. Um, so I, I, I'm just concerned, you know, we, they came in two weeks ago and on a Friday, I believe it was, when the offices were closed. They tried to upgrade the system for the new um, 365. Mm -hmm. And um, so he called me, Holland called me at home, and he was able to get into the bookkeeping computer and my laptop and the recording station for Sarah but he was unable to do any other computers um, because they weren't on. And, um, but there was no advance notice that this was gonna be done. There was, you know, we had called them and told them we wanted to do this, but um, I just feel every time we have work done with them that we always have some kind of issue and um, as it was after he upgraded mine, he just says, okay, when it comes back up, he says, just uh, go in and do this and do that, which I went in to do and I couldn't do it. So I had to call him back. And then he charged just for that time for me to put in a support ticket. And uh, I, I'm unimpressed. I think one of the things that stuck out to me looking through some of these service tickets uh, 
that Dorinda provide us, provided us was uh, there doesn't seem to be resolution um, in a lot of them. And there's no, like, if, if the problem is aging equipment, and maybe this was before my time, but there's no recommendation on, uh, you know, letting us know to, that we need to start looking at different equipment if that's what the issue is. Um, so it, it, I got the impression, and and again, I don't know what's happened here before, but I got the impression like the atten the attentiveness just isn't there, um, and and it's kind of like. Yeah, I'm here. Here's 15 minutes. I'm billing you for it. Even though half of the issues are things that are unresolved and they're just repeating. Um, anyway, that was my take on the information that I saw today. And I haven't had a chance to uh, I haven't had a chance to look over that, but you know, we've been hearing for a long time from Dorinda that she's not, and from and from Sarah that they're not. Uh, comfortable with the service we're getting. What What is the date on that contract they want us to sign? Well, I guess they wanted it signed a while back from my understanding. Um, I don't know when the original quote came through, but um, I got a copy of it the other day. And um, I don't know, do you know when this was supposed to take effect, Sarah? When this is supposed to what? When did we originally, because it sounded from the tone of the email we got the other day that we still hadn't signed this contract. I, you know, I think that this was something that we discussed a while ago. So I was really confused by we went when, when we got this, um, either it had been resolved or I thought it was sent like Phil wanted to look at it. I, I, I don't know why I was surprised by your tone as well. Well, I hadn't seen it before. Mm -hmm the other day so i don't know if you've got a copy Phil. i i didn't i didn't get a copy before this well oh, here's no. here's what i think we need to do guys is we need to ask them for a three-month extension of our contract whatever the expiration date of the contract is and then we need to go out and look at our options interview people again talk to talk to different vendors i at this point i used to know who all the vendors are i don't know anymore but i'm I'm sure we can can figure out who they are, um, and and see what our options are because we don't feel like I've had several conversations with Ruben and you know nothing seems to change, mm -hmm. um, and I know you've had conversations with them as well, Phil. So yeah. the last page. So the last the last page on this says the delivery date is nine two, with an expiration date of nine thirty for this. Um, monthly agreement. Yeah, but that's, They're saying that's the expiration of our current contract. Only one month. That's he's just given, I think. Well, that's attached to this. That's attached to the quote. That's just, you know, showing how we're going to be billed. Um, I don't think that. Oh, that was just a sample bill. That was a sample bill. OK, never mind. Um, but we, you know, the other thing is, is I really don't understand what's in this monthly agreement that we pay for, which is seven hundred, almost eight hundred dollars a month now, because they still turn around and charge us. Like if you look at these billing tickets, um, they charge us like on seven twenty two, they charge us thirty two fifty for a recurring monthly health checkup. I would assume that would be part of the right. services, but yeah. I don't remember all, all what I re, what I remember is what I remember is that we contracted for a certain number of hours per month. Well, that's different than the. Bob, I believe we pay. So we pay so much for um. The first two hours are are one hundred and thirty dollars and fifty cents for the first two hours. And then the billing structure later on in the agreement moves to $200 an hour. So they give us two hours a month at a discounted rate. Right. That's how it was done. So, but what is included in the monthly programming? Because they should, if they're coming in to check our, if we contract them to check our computers once a month or how often they do it, why are we also paying for you know, why is this time also going on the service ticket? I would think it would be part of the monthly checkup. Uh, I, I, 
mean, we'd, we'd have to go back and look at the contract we signed whenever we signed it. But, uh, you know, I've, I've heard enough over time and feel like we've suffered enough. And I think we just have to say, hey, we, we want some time to look at other options before we sign this contract. And they're probably going to say, well, we need to, you know, give you another bump in the rate or whatever they need to do. I mean, it's going to take us some time to do this. We can't, we can't, uh, we can't, we can't fire them and not have somebody else ready to go. So I don't know how the, I don't know how the rest of you feel, but I mean, I'm, I, I feel like we've, we've beaten this horse. Harinda tells us these horror stories every, every month. And uh, Sarah tells us horror stories and they, nothing seems to change. Mm -hmm. I agree. I really wish we could find like an individual who was reasonably local who could, you know, cover this stuff as opposed to a firm where we're small potatoes to them. Because that's what it feels like with our B Tech that we're we're not big enough to really be particularly important to them. Well, we are small potatoes. Let's yeah. say and I don't know. I mean, maybe there are those individuals out there. In their old, in the old days, there were a number of people who, yeah. uh, yep. who did that, who did that kind of work. But uh, I'm, I don't know who they are now. I'm sure we've talked about this, but who does like Callis and Wor Worcester and all those places? Who does that? Liz? Yeah, I'm wondering who does. Do we? I did. Sarah, have you talked to oh, the oh, other I town clerks? Okay. Uh, no, but I'll be happy to. Yeah, Just, good idea. They might have someone that. That'd be a good start, but I think, I think what we need to do is, uh, is, is send them a letter and say, and, and I don't know how long the right the right period is that we we request a sixty day uh, a sixty day contract, and we need to let you know that we're going to use that time to explore other options and see what the, see what their response is. Maybe they'll say, well, in that case, you're all done September thirtieth. I don't know. I would hope they wouldn't do that. Either that or we just ignore the contract and go ahead and go ahead and do it and see what they do. Probably better to lay our cards on the table than just ignore it. I would rather do the I would rather do it that way. Yeah. Closes and no one opens. <laughs> So who's going to take on, I guess I'll ask the question, who's going to take on the job of finding a new, other than Sarah checking into the other town? I mean, again, that's one more thing that needs to be put on the goal list. Yeah. Well, there was a, you guys, yeah, I was just thinking back, like in April, the board or somebody from the board was going to meet with RB Tech. And I've talked to them several times. You have? Yeah, I did back then. In April? Well, this after that, after that, whenever that was that we had this discuss this serious discussion the last time, yes. Yeah. And Ruben was gonna call me and set up a meeting. He never did. I followed up once and he still never got back to me. So no, I don't think, I don't think that we've seen that contract before now. So I know I think no, I don't think so. I mean, do we so. have do we have our current contract? What's the contract we're operating under now? I have go back and I don't recall signing a contract in a long time. No. Just been doing um, rate increases and no notification or anything. It's just, oh, here's a bill for this. You know, it, this is your new, you know, monthly bill. And I think it's at least two years, if, if not some sort of three. I'd have to go back and find where the original bill, I think it got. No, the, the last, the last contract you have, I believe it, well, this is the data. This is perception managed services by RB tech. I don't know if that's the same thing. That yeah. was what this is. That's from uh, June 30th of 2020. Okay, there you go. 2020. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's so, two years. That's two years, a little over two. And then their proposal for what they would do for us is from, October 30th, 2019. And the first contract you had was, I think, 2017. 
Well, sir, if you could put out something or, or call some other clerks to see who they're using. Yep. Um, that would be a good first step. And I'd, I'd be willing to make a few phone calls if there's, you know, some people around at least to start beating the bushes a little bit. And I don't know why I'm on uh, the contact on this or even why this would be marked confidential. We're a municipality. There's no reason for this to be marked it's not confidential. confidential. Right. So, you know, ugh. anyway. Okay, I will do that. Okay. I'm sliding out, guys. See you next time. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. So, so the process is going to be, sir, you're going to make some phone calls, give that information to Phil. He's going to make some calls. Are we going to notify? Uh, I think we should oh, notify. Uh, by the end of the week, I'll have, a, I'll have a list of the towns in this area and what, what tech, who they use for tech services. How's that? And how happy they are. You're great, Sarah. I'm, I haven't done it yet, Liz. So I yeah, mean, like, you're well. going to be great. <laughs> so do we, at the same time, at the same time, do we send RB Tech a letter? I just, I mean, I'd wait and see what happens by, I don't know, maybe not. Let's I, just wait till Friday to see what, what if they all have RB Tech? Well, the other thing is, is I don't think they're going, they just keep charging us. I, whether they have a contract in place, I, I it appears to be they just well, keep in the short in the short run let's let's ignore the contract in the, in the long run if, if we're really gonna gonna start interviewing other people i think we have to let rb know i i think it's dirty cool if we don't do that but uh well, find out who these other folks are using and at least take a few preliminary steps before we do anything and if they if they uh if they call and ask why we haven't signed the contract i'm happy to have a conversation with them and say we're we're considering other options <laughs> I think you need to give us more than four days if we just received this last week, you know, right. to make the decision on it. Well, I wonder if there's a if there's an end date on our current contract. Who knows? I don't no, know. I mean it's two years old, and this contract is for a twelve month period. So, I think what happened is through the through the whole ordeal, they issued the contract. We signed it two years ago. We've been operating underneath the a month to month agreement because the contract expired basically. And, and that's, they noticed that they didn't have a signed contract and that's how this one popped up. So this Thank one, you. this says this agreement shall commence as of 9-1-2022 and shall remain in effect for a minimum period of 12 months. There's no end date. It's just a minimum period for a year. Yeah. See, that's probably what's, that's probably what's, What's happened? So let's let's take it one let's take it one step at a time. But um, you know, I don't know. I mean, it'll be very interesting to see what what Sarah finds out from the other towns yeah. and how happy and how happy they are. If they're all as unhappy as we are, maybe the way the world is these days. I don't know. But well, it is I, frustrating. The last place I worked, we used Ormsby's, but I don't know if they do municipalities or not. But even still in business yeah. yeah yeah do they just sell dishwashers yeah no, no that was different they have a computer end of it and yeah. um so but Wasn't there was a guy that approached us that was i from think Burlington. there was i think there's some guy in town it's not david lawrence guy. it seems like it's some uh maybe we should just put something on front porch forum saying hey do you have great computer skills do you i don't know but there was a guy, a single guy, and remember he tried to sell us his, and we were like, well. That was a long time ago. I think they were was. in Berlin. That was a long time ago. I mean, there, there may be those guys out there. I would just, I would just warn you, in my, in my experience down through the years, the, the high, and, and I had single guys working for me under contracts. I had single guys working for me as employees. That's all well and good till they're sick on a, on vacation what do they have for what do they have for backup when the server right. goes down? but anyway also i think we have, have plans for that we have uh don't we have like a lot of information on rb servers as well backed up oh yeah yep, they, they're backing up they're backing up our stuff but somebody else is doing just like they can okay all right i don't i, don't, I, I mean they they probably would like to think they have us I mean, I don't think they have us, and I don't think they've been very responsive, and I don't think they've done a good job managing our account. So, 
you know, all we hear from Dorinda and, and Sarah is, is complaints about the bill and complaints about this and complaints about that. And I don't disagree with them. Well, I, I just don't, I guess maybe we don't understand the bill, although they, you know, many, when I first came on, they came in and met with us and tried to explain the bill. And that's when we bought more hours. Mm -hmm. but, right. Um, it, it just is, it's really confusing how they just bill for everything. Well, the intent of, and I, I remember those conversations, the intent of setting up those hours was that's the amount of time that they thought they were going to need to service our account on a monthly basis. We said, we don't want to be getting, you know, we don't want to be, I mean, once in a while, are we going to get bills for extra time? Sure we are, but it seems like every single month we get bills for extra time. Every month we have extra bills. Right. All right. Yeah. And, I, and I also agree that, that my memory is that part of this process was that they were supposed to, you know, have a plan for us updating and doing whatever we needed to do with our equipment. And for them just to say, well, your service too old. Well, why weren't they coming to us a year ago and saying it's time to upgrade your server and here's, here are the options? No. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's all I really had. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, let, let's see what Sarah comes up with and then we can we can go from there. But in the meantime, don't sign the contract. No. Okay. No. Okay. Thank you. Uh, approving minutes of August 16th, 2022 select board meeting action likely. Minutes, I'm sorry. Is there a motion? I'll move. Second? I'll second it. Okay, thank you. All in favor of approving the minutes? of uh, okay. 15, 2022, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, we've approved our minutes. Approving the MOU with CV fiber action likely. Um, Didn't get it back from Rob after you got the attachment, the, sec the attachment number one. Okay, so I guess we're still waiting on that. We should pass over it. I guess so, yeah. I have a question relating to that. Um, we cut the hundred thousand dollar check. If we should, I hold off sending that. I would think so. It's in the orders for tonight, so I can pull it back. But um... probably because they'll probably cash it. <laughs> right, exactly. So, so hold off on sending that. Yeah, I would say so. I mean. Yeah. All yeah. right. Just to be on the safe side, it's probably right. a good idea. <laughs> it's not jump change. And if you could, you could see if you could light a fire under uh, under Rob, Sarah, that would be great. I will. Or if I need to do it, let me know, and I'll uh, and I'll call. Him. No, you know, it just was a long holiday weekend, things like that. Oh no. Okay, here's a good one, and I'm I'm recommending uh, I'm recommending we pass over this tonight because I think we need to think about this. This is considering to continue requiring social service agencies to submit petitions with five percent of the town's voters if they're requesting more than two hundred and fifty dollars um, to be approved in March seventh town meeting, and have never requested funding before, or they are increasing their request. Um, my thinking on this is we probably do need to have a petition over a certain amount, but I think that $250 is the wrong amount. I, I think it's too low. Uh, we've had that 250 for a long time, but I think we're running out of time and energy tonight and I don't wanna, don't wanna make that uh, decision quickly. So I would ask you all to think about that and let's take it up at our next uh, meeting if that's okay with everyone. Okay, we're gonna pass over. Um, discussing whether to resume in-person select board meetings action possible. Um, it's a lovely space down here. <laughs> Randy likes it. I'm still at the office, Randy. I see that. <laughs> I, I couldn't I, make it to the office in time because I had a meeting until five o'clock. I personally am in full support of meeting in person again. Um, Me too. I I think it's long overdue. 
Well, I don't know if it's long overdue, but I think it's overdue. And uh, we are going to create the ability for people to, uh, to, to zoom in and participate in meetings if they wish to. So when would we do this? Effective the first meeting in uh, October? Yeah, does that give us all time to get our that the new shot, which I think is coming out like this week? This week, yeah. Oh God. But this is a promising shot for the Omicron. They all were. Well, no, this is more promising. Okay. You guys want to make a motion? I would say I would say it does not give us enough time to get the shot. So maybe we should say November first. Uh. Now, I'm not a fan of going in person meeting at all. Because of the Omicron? Right. I mean, because of the COVID, yeah. Yeah, I'm not 29 years old anymore. I don't think any of us are, Victor. I thought you were. Sometimes I behave like I am, but that doesn't mean it's real. Right. No, I mean, I, I understand what you guys are saying. Um, I mean, I maybe it should be that we, those who can come in person, come in person, and that we make it an in-person meeting, and if you don't feel comfortable coming in person, then you call in. That's very well, kind. That's kind of where we're at today, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. That's real kind. No, I don't like, I don't like that. I, I, I mean. Britta's here too, right? You're, you're sitting somewhere there. Too, and I want to, I believe that you guys are really missing out looking at these orders. Um, things that come through that um, I think whether, no matter how many people look at them, I also think it's good that other people look at them as well. Um, I do believe there's a lot being missed on it. And, um, you know, it's, uh, I think it's important to know where some of this money's going because you see the totals, but you don't see what it's, it's in that total. Um, I just want to say, though, Dorinda, because I, I wondered sort of what happened the times that I have come in. I haven't seen them, probably because it's not safe to just leave them out. Leave them out on the counter, you know. No, you're, but all I see are the, um, the just the sheets, the, the two pagers with the, with yeah, the uh, totals. Yeah. Not the, I don't see the actual, like, receipts and things like that, that's that right. we used to look at. We don't put them out on, we don't put them right. out. So that's what you're missing out on. Right. And, you know, that's what I'm saying that I think it's very important for people to um, come in and look at them. And I don't think it's fair that if you come in on Monday and Vic comes in on Tuesday and Randy comes in on Wednesday, that the bookkeeper has to go pull out the file. And, you know, when. No, no, no. I, I don't disagree with that. I just. I'm talking about when I'm there during a, a, a meeting on a Tuesday. Right. So would, I haven't seen those. It would well. You've only been to two, and we haven't changed the protocol. I mean, so they're not like Randy. You don't have them right now. Yes. You yeah. Do. I mean, she do. she went she went and grabbed them for me tonight, okay. sitting here right next to me. Yeah. And uh, I let's, mean, let's, come let's, up let's on. make a decision about when we're going to go to in person meetings. November 1st. And, and again, guys, if, if all of a sudden the world comes to hell and half of half of uh, Vermont has has Omicron and the other half has monkeypox, we'll go right back to remote again. We can do it quick. You want, make, have to you want a motion? Yes. I, move that, I move that we uh, we uh, uh, move the uh, meeting in person date to the first uh, select board meeting in the uh, month of November. Is there a second? I'd like to see October myself. I, I think, again, I think that it's, we keep pushing it off. We keep pushing it off. And I think there's something. The only, to reason, the only reason to push it off, Randy, is that there's a real chance that, that most of us can get that shot by the 1st of November, which I think there will be. I think that's a reason to push it off until November. It's been this long. Another month isn't going to make that much difference. You guys all come in and you all sign the orders and, you know, it's like there's nobody else sitting in this room except for the people that you come in and meet with when you come in to sign the orders. So I, I just. Yeah, but if you're going to, 
if it, that's not that's not actually I, I don't agree with that because I go in there and if I want to look up some, I ask Cheryl, and it's, she just pulls and she pulls that blue, uh, uh, that blue uh, file folder out. And if you think that bothers Cheryl too much, I'll go down. I'll get up early and I'll go down with Eric when he goes through it, and Cheryl's not there. Well, I I think. You're only that? looking at the highway folder that has the highway bills. You're not looking at all the other ones. They are not, you're not looking at the office bills. You're well, I think they should be left out because if no. you're in an in-person meeting, I, if you're in an in-person meeting, and I remember when I was on the select board before, and you sit there and you try to go through them and everybody's talking and the meeting's going on, you don't pay any attention to them or you can't, you don't, you miss out on them on the meeting. I think you have to have a separate quiet time to look at them. I don't, I know I do. Well, I guess I know for a fact that Liz would sit in every single meeting and add up every single invoice. Well, I and guess Liz is a much greater genius than I am, and I were lucky to have her on the board, but I don't think that's true for me. Well, maybe so then don't look at the bills, but I'm just saying that, you know, tonight I found hey, look, guys, look, 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 we're getting we're we're getting off the point. Do we want to do it October first or November first? I say this to October 1st, and if you can't come because you haven't gotten your viral shot yet, you just come on the the Zoom. Okay, so... So try to come so on October Victor's, 1st if you can. Victor's, Make that your goal. So Victor's motion is going to die for lack of a second. Are you ready to make a motion, Liz? Uh, I'll, I'll move that we st start October 1st um, with the goal of everyone coming, and if they can't, they come via Zoom. <laughs> Is there a second for that motion, Randy? I'll second. Thank you. All in favor of going in person on October 1st, please say aye. 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 And opposed, Victor? I abstain. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. So the motion does the motion does pass. Uh, it, does. Three, it does. It does. Three aye votes. Yep. Um, so October 1st, we will be in person. So Sarah, how are we going to notify the community? Are you going to do a front porch forum post? Are we yeah. going to, are we going to do I, I think Why? What are we going to do? So, uh, so just to be, just to be clear, it's the first meeting in October, which happens to be October 4th. Yes. So I think what we'll do is we'll just, you know, I'll put out a general note. I'll put something on the website that says, if you want to tune into a meeting, if you want to come to the meeting, we encourage you to come to the meeting. But if you want to come through Zoom, we'll come through Zoom. And we'll just have one laptop here that like this, that if someone wants to come in Zoom, they can come and they can participate and we'll work it out as we go and see how my recommendations, you guys figure out where you want to meet, what what you want these meetings to look like, and then you can try to work on camera equipment from there. But yeah, I think most people I know who want to come to meetings, they both they are willing to come to the meetings. I've had to tell people the board Here's is the meeting. Other question. We are not we are not allowed at this point in time to require masks, right? You can do whatever you want. I thought the state of Vermont had a rule about that for public meetings. That you could no longer require masks. Am I wrong about that? I, 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 I don't know about. I don't know that the state of Vermont can tell you whether or not you can require masks or not. I, I don't. I personally don't even think we should go there. Yeah, I don't think that's an issue. No, I'll probably wear a mask if people are coming, but I don't think we're getting a lot of people. Coming. All, all those that want to wear a mask are more than happy to wear a mask. I don't think we have the conversation about trying to force people to wear yeah, masks. That's fine. I, I agree with you. If somebody wants to wear a mask, they can, they can wear well, one. I'm scheduling my appointment right now. I, I will tell you my policy in the town office. I've, we've been one of the few town offices that have been open consistently from the get-go. We've been very, very lucky, knock on wood, not to have a COVID exposure. But the rule I have is if someone wants to come into the office and research and they want us to wear masks, we will wear masks. But otherwise, I don't require people to come in and wear masks. That's just kind of the way it's all worked. And it's been fine. I'm not a lawyer, but I don't think legally we can uh, do that unless there's a state mandate. But again, I'm not a lawyer, but I wouldn't, I I don't think we 
go there. I can't so, even go to the Secretary of State's office. They still they still have a doorbell, and I have to stand outside the door, and they have to decide whether or not to let me in and put a mask on. So that's what the state's in the emergency room and things like that. So we'll right, the let's see how it let's let's see how it goes. Isn't let's that when we, uh, we're doing the fire department public meeting too? That's. Right. The the I think you guys kind of tentatively spoke about that. Wasn't there something on the 29th or something? There's something on the 20th. You're having the public hearing about the zoning regulations. But then you didn't make a de definite decision. You didn't make a definite decision about the the fire department. I think we did. I think, it I think we did. We did. Right. Yeah, we did. All right. I'm sure we did. And I want to say it's like. I almost thought it was October 4th, maybe. Oh, my God. October 4th. The board designated its October 4th, 2022 meeting for a public hearing on merging the fire department into the town. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for refreshing my memory. There you go. I just made my appointment. <laughs> but it's not coming till next week. The, the appointments aren't available till next week. Okay. Where did you get your appointment, Liz? Walgreens in um, Montpelier. Okay. Wow. And there's plenty of appointments. And it says for the Omicron variant, and I'm getting my flu shot, which I would recommend you all do as well. Oh, God, I'll be so sick. I'll be so sick. Just do it all at once. Right. I, every time I get one of these shots, I'm down for the count for three days. We'll get take sick one the last on the third of no October. Better that than being down for the count for real. <laughs> right? Yes. Yes, so. <laughs> Pretty bad. I mean, chills, fever, it's awful. Okay. Great. I'm going to go have a cocktail. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any anything else for tonight's meeting? I just yeah. wanted to I just wanted to mention that the uh, Mead Road uh, scrimmage uh, continues on. Yeah, let's not get into that, please. Have you had, have you had, uh, have you been uh, conversation? Yeah, I get them, I get them uh, every day, just about. I, I got a, I received a, uh, an email and a phone call uh, about that as well. Um, provided some uh, links to information. Um, that pictures? was, but it's pictures? not, what's that? Pictures, Randy. I didn't see any pictures, no. I got pictures, but I couldn't figure out what they meant. So it, it sounds like there's a, a political sign um, placed in the right of way on the class four um, in the last residence property of that road. Oh, okay. And uh, I was questioned as to information that, that uh, the town had about um, whether or not that was prohibited or not. Um, I couldn't find much other than what was in the town highway ordinance. Um, and uh, the VTRANS in the state of Vermont, the, the legislative statute, I think it was Title 10, 495, prohibits that from taking place with the exemption of signs that were less than 260 square inches. Hmm. Uh, but if it doesn't sound like the town has um, a specific ordinance on uh, signs like that, the town highway ordinance refers to some some signage saying that the road commissioner needs to approve any signs that somebody would want to put up. But that seems to be like more in a permanent capacity. Um, so it's it seems like a pretty gray area overall. I don't think we want to get into policing political signs. Of course. And I wouldn't even leave it at political signs. I mean, it could be, you know, a yard sale sign or something like that. Yeah, but I think what I think what people get revved up about is the political signs. Well, uh, I don't I don't know. I mean, there's people put up signs from time to time, they take them down. I'm not a, I'm not aware that we have a serious, serious problem, although I can certainly understand that somebody could object maybe potentially to a political sign, but what are they, what are they, is that what they're complaining about? That one of their neighbors is putting up a, a political uh, Don't get into it. 
<laughs> there was no mention of that. It's just that was the question, and and I said uh, uh, they asked me if I gave permission, and I said I have not talked to uh, the person you're talking about since the select board meeting that we all met at. I got out of it that way. It's an ongoing neighborly dispute. Uh, yeah. That continued over from our last yeah. our board meeting. Um, yeah. Whereas, you know, uh, one of the neighbors put a political sign on the other neighbors within the right of way of of the road. Um, that's that's really yeah, on, the other, on the other neighbor's property, though. Yes. In the right of way on the her pro on the on on the other yeah, neighbor's it's, property. It's their property. Why don't they put it up on their own property? Because because should we be pit? talking about this? I really, 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 really think that this is not wise. It's not warned. Like, let's maybe we should. Move okay. Over. All right. Okay. If it if it keeps bubbling to the surface, maybe we'll have to do something. I I don't like the idea that they're putting up on the neighbor's land. I don't care whether it's in the right of way or not. But yeah, but that's, that's kind of like a property. That's a property to owner to property owner dispute. No, I don't disagree. Okay, folks. Have a good evening. We'll see you in person on October 4th. Randy? Well, no, you're going to see us virtually on the 20th of September. Oh, hold on, everybody. I have a conference in Atlanta that day. Is there going to be a quorum if I don't attend? The 20th? Yeah. I don't know anybody else who's not going to be there. Yeah. Is there a problem with me not being there? I mean, so it sounds like the four others would be there. Yeah. yeah, I don't know about Phil, but. Well, we've got three of us then anyway. Yeah. Okay. If you're, if you're going, Liz, you're going. No, I know, but I mean, I, you no, know. No, 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 it's, it's fine. I could maybe get out of whatever this, e whatever the evening thing is in the conference. No. But I'm, I'm afraid I'd forget. <laughs> Once I'm out of like Vermont, I forget like what's going on in the rest of the world. <laughs> you'll have a quorum because these three are agreeing to be here okay yep. That's good. all right okay good night everyone bye bye, bye. bye.